Okay, so I want to talk about fat. And um, this is going to be very unscripted and it's going to sort of drift from one thing to another. I've got a vague idea in what direction it's going. Uh, but I put this on my hand grenades channel, which means I should have started the video off by going boom. Um, once again, I pulled the pin on the purple hand grenade of logic, reason, rationality, something, something, um, something like that. I can't remember exactly what it was. I was going to say each time. Anyway. So what started this off was that I looked at something on the BBC's website uh, this morning that dated from back in October. And what it was about was somebody, this photographer, who took these pictures of beautiful women. This female photographer took these pictures of beautiful women. Let me see if I can dredge it up, right, because it's, it's worth listening to. This is what got me thinking about the fat thing, right, was that, um, there's the link. Is this what real beauty looks like? And what it said was, they're quite good photos these, by the way. I'll, I'll put the link down. It says, go to Google Images right now, says photographer, photographer Mihaela Norok, and search beautiful women. I do as she tells me. Millions of results come back. What do you see, she asks. Very sexualized images, right? Yes, many of women in the top pictures are wearing high heels and revealing clothes and most fit into the same physical mould, young, slim, blonde, perfect skin. Kind of things you'd probably want if it's beautiful women. You wouldn't expect some 80-year-old Siberian woman who spent the best part of the last 40 years standing in a fucking bread queue, right, with a wind howling uh, past her skin. Would you, really? Uh, but what I found interesting, this is the sort of chain of events, was that I thought, okay, let's go and Google beautiful women. So I went and Googled beautiful women. I'll Google it again. I'll take you a screen. I'll take a screen grab and show you. And this is what I saw. It wasn't really what I expected because actually the images were a lot less sexualized. Most of them were portrait images. Safe search is off, by the way. And most of them are portrait images and not very sexualized. So I just thought... I'll Google beautiful men. And so I Googled beautiful men and this is what I got. And I'm kind of surprised really. I wouldn't have expected this because I think probably women are portrayed in a more sexualized manner in the, in the media more often than men are. Even In fact, even, even women themselves, in fact, it's a truism that if you put an, an image of a, a beautiful scantily dressed woman a sexualized woman on a man men's magazine it sells more copies than if you have a man on the man's magazine but it's the same thing on a women's magazine as well right it sells more having a, a sexually attractive woman on a women's magazine than having a sexually attractive man which is why if you go and look at all the magazines men's and women's magazines tend to feature more women on the cover than men so this isn't just a fucking horrible men thing but Interesting, this is what I saw with the beautiful men. More sexualized images, look, these guys, very, very toned guys, showing off their highly toned torsos for us all uh, to admire. Some of us, some, some of us gay men and women, I suppose, in a sexual sense. Uh, it seemed the more sexualized images of the men than the women. So I started going down that and I ended up clicking on something which then took me on to modeling and the world of modeling and, of course... <clears throat> the fact that most models, female models, are uh, very, very uh, underweight. I, I, and and I, I, something, something myself, I've never really got my head around that. I think the idea is also, has always been that, well, it shows the clothes off better. But I, I've never really even bought that, really. Because I think a lot of the time, looking at catwalk models, they, don't, they, look, they make their clothes look a bag of shite, quite honestly. Because they're so thin... I don't actually think it looks ideal. I mean, often when you see a nice garment, especially with a woman with a cracking pair of tits, let's not, let's not beat around the bush, right? It makes the garment look great and it makes her look great, doesn't it? Nothing looks better than that or when properly filling out a garment like that. I'm not talking about fat women or even women that are just a little bit overweight. I'm talking about women that are in good shape but but have some, some curves, Um not the not the sort of and, androgynous waifs of the catwalk 
that that don't have that have about as much breast tissue as I have. Uh, quite honestly, I don't see that that makes the clothes look good. So I never really understood that, and yet we have this phenomenon in fashion where. Just even just a, a woman, a woman that the rest of us would regard as, as having an incredible body, an incredible shape, would be regarded as too fat. You need to go away and lose even more weight. You need to actually be classed as underweight, borderline anorexic, because they're interested. Do I think that's unhealthy? Yes. Do I think it's unnecessary? Yes. And I'm, I don't really know how the the fashion industry has got itself into that, but. It then got on to a model called Ashley Graham, who is a plus size uh, fashion uh, model, and she was a size. She's a size sixteen, and I've had a look at some pictures of Ashley Graham. I would say she's quite a large sixteen. She's at that kind of point where, if you look at her legs in a picture that's not been touched up, the fat's at the point where it's just starting to kind of sag the skin down a little bit. Um, and she's big, uh, you know, her thighs overlap, and she's a big girl, um, a, a physically, facially attractive girl. But it started me thinking about a couple of things that I've always thought about this. Let me run them past you, and then I'll, I'll talk about the fat shaming, fat acceptance thing, which is really, I suppose, what I ultimately wanted to get to. The first two things that's always always come to mind with me when it comes to, 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 fat, to, to fat people is I, I can never get my head around. There's two things that I think about. The first is this, is, is that if you see somebody who's, who's thin, you see the size of a human skeleton, right? And bones are actually really thin. There's not a lot to them. And a, if you see somebody who's like anorexic, you see just how little there is left once you strip the flesh away. It is true, if you do weight-bearing exercise, your bones get a bit denser, and they can thicken up a little bit. A little bit. Okay, so maybe people that are heavily obese, very obese, morbidly obese, their skeletons of increased a few percent and are a little bit denser but effectively those bones are the same size and when I see somebody who's really fucking big like 35 40 stone what would that be 200 and uh, 420 to 560 pounds when I see somebody who's that kind of size I always pictured the skeleton within them you know and 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 kind of the mind boggles that 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 tiny little superstructure is supporting them it's kind of scary really i can imagine it all just kind of collapsing at any moment it's a testament to how strong the skeleton is that is just something that i i always i don't think about it in a good sense or a bad sense just something that always occurs to me the second is how different people are and I don't, yeah, I used to keep newts years, I used to keep newts, right, great crested newts, actually illegal to keep them in the UK because we're protected species, but I kept them, bred them and, and released them back into the wild. They'd been shot at, the ones I got, believe it or not, by kids with an air rifle and, and I salvaged them and over a period of years kept them, bred them and released them back into the wild. Anyway. All newts look pretty much the same, other than the spots on their belly, right? Pretty much all frogs look the same. Pretty much all rats look the same, and mice look the same. Cats, I've seen, my friends had a really fucking fat cat, and it was fat, this cat. It weighed about two stone, which is fucking immense for a domestic cat. They usually weigh about three quarters of a stone. Immense fucking thing. But most cats, a fat cat and a skinny cat, looks pretty much the same. Some people have quite fat dogs, but again, but pretty similar. But humans, it just shocks me. You see people most of the time with their clothes on. And you can see the difference. You can see some people bigger, some people smaller. I mean, I focus, I suppose, on women because I'm a straight man. So I look at women more and in a different light to I do men. So if I'm focusing on women here, that's because I'm a straight man. If I was a gay man or a straight woman, you probably the same would be true with men. Um, but, you know... You see women with clothes on and without, so with clothes on, larger women, as long as they're not, you know, really obese, it doesn't make a great deal of difference. The clothes may be disguises in the way that fur does for, for some of these other animals. But I, I've seen sometimes very fat women stood next to slim women. And the difference is like, 
so stark when they haven't got their clothes on. Undressed. The difference between a slim person and somebody, even somebody else who's just a little bit over the weight is quite overweight, is quite stark, isn't it? Not when people are dressed. All we see is the face bit, really, and a bit of a sort of outline which can be sort of manipulated depending on what you wear, etc. But we all look kind of similar. And even people that are very large, wear loose-fitting clothes, blah de blah de blah But once you see people fully revealed, I don't know if it's a bad thing to say, but I almost feel like I'm looking at two different species, you know. It's like so starkly different... You just don't see it anywhere else. There's no other species I see where I see sort of individuals that are so fucking different. And why are humans like that and other species aren't? I can only think it's because we have an overabundance of food that allows for that. And where this fits into the whole... And I don't mean that in a shaming or everybody's entitled to be the size they are and to do whatever they are. And it's not me criticising anybody. You crack on and, and, and do things however however you wish. Um, but it's the side of it. I'm, I'm very much anti-fat shaming, actually. I think saying, making humiliating fat people, being nasty to fat people, treating fat people differently outside of sexual or personal relationships, right? Um, because of their, uh, their levels of body fat is absolutely wrong. Unless it's relevant to what you're doing. You know, if you've got, if you if you want to be in the army or something, obviously it's going to be relevant. But but unless it's relevant, I think it's absolutely wrong. But then you have on the on the fat acceptance side, you have these suggestions that we should all find everything equally attractive, or that if it wasn't for society culturing us in a certain way, we'd find somebody who is very fat, we'd find that just as attractive as somebody who is very slim. And and I don't know. Obviously, beauty standards have changed over the years, and it's often said that that when food was a little bit more of a scarcer commodity and valued a little bit more, and we didn't have such an overabundance, that the average body shape that we found attractive was bigger than it is now, and I accept that culture plays a role. But so stark is the difference between people who are slim and people who are very fat that if you were to, for me, if you were to find both equally attractive you'd almost have to find nothing particularly attractive. There'd almost have to be nothing in particular that you were attracted to. So stark are the difference in human bodies. It just seems entirely unreasonable to suggest that people are going to find all these different things equally attractive. And and there's almost then a level of shaming that's going on in the other direction. You know, whereas if you're not finding all these things equally attractive, then kind of shame on you. And I think that's just, it's not just unfair, but it's entirely, it's entirely, um, it's just, it's just, it, it, there's, 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 it's never going to it's never going to achieve anything that it's just a naive it's not it's a naive goal because it's going against the way that we are yeah maybe bringing us up you know it does society does change exactly what it is it tunes in exactly what we find attractive but the only way that society could make us even if you were to try and engineer society so that we would find very fat people and very thin people and everybody in between equally attractive, you'd almost have to make nothing attractive, right? It doesn't matter what you have. It's all equally attractive. Just any mound of flesh of any shape, size or description. Um, no features whatsoever are attractive features. I, it's just, it just, it doesn't seem to make any sense to me that. Um, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say with regard to that. Um, I, I always remember, you know, I can waffle on because that's the nature of this kind of video, that when I was growing up, my father always said to me that um, middle-aged spread, that's what he called it, middle-aged spread was inevitable, that as you got older, I was like, I'm like my father, when I was young, I was very thin, he was very thin, shorter, smaller than I was, very athletic guy, he used to be a merchant uh, merchant sailor and he used to he could jump up they had a bar high, a railing high up um, over the edge of the ship and he could jump up grab hold of the bar drag the bar down to his waist 
roll over the bar and push himself into a handstand, uh, which takes quite a lot of fitness and strength, but it also gives you an indication that he was, he's about, I say short, he was about five foot seven, five foot eight, and um, very, 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 very lightly built when he was younger. Uh, but but I, I was, he was about 37, 38 when I was born. And so when I was young, he always used to say to me that his middle age spread it's inevitable. There's inevitability about it. As you get older, you get fatter. And I objected to that at the time. I thought, no, I don't buy that. I don't buy that there's nothing that you can do about it. I think that's bollocks. I think that's kind of defeatist. Yes, if you just sit there and say, well, yeah, the the years are going to take their toll and that's what's going to happen. And, and I think that my mother has the same kind of attitude. She always said that after she had me, I was the third of three children that... Um, she could never get her figure back. But when I said to her, what did you do to try and get your figure back? You know, what, 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 what exercise programs did you do? What did you do? Well, she didn't actually do anything. Right? I think that was a kind of ethos now. People, society has a bit of a different ethos now. Uh, and uh, it isn't true that you have to get substantially fatter as you get older. You just have to do more, right? You have to do more. If you're not going to spend several hours a week Every week, every year, for the rest of your life, right, as part of your lifestyle, then you are going to put on weight for most of us, for 90% of us, I think, as you as you get older. So you either do that or you don't. Personally, I mean, you do what the fuck you like, I think. You know, I, 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 no, I think fat shaming, said this before, when that horrible comedian woman made that horrible video a couple of years back on youtube i think it's a fucking horrible thing what what help are you giving to somebody who probably they already fucking know they could do with losing a few pounds for fuck's sake that they're not looking their best that they're not feeling their best you telling them isn't really going to help them you're just going to make them feel low and as i said back in the day one thing i've been lucky with is that if I get unhappy and stressed, I lose my appetite. Some people are the other way around. When they get stressed and unhappy, they eat, they comfort eat. And obviously in terms of keeping the weight down, that does present the, the possibility of quite a vicious uh, circle arising there of getting unhappy, eating more. And because you eat more, you get more unhappy. And you're the one that's got to break yourself out of that cycle, obviously, if that happens. But it can't be a very easy thing to do but at the other hand this idea this idea this sort of fat ultra radical fat acceptance thing that there's something kind of wrong with you or amiss unless you find all body shapes equally attractive that that makes you a bad person it's just fucking naive it's unachievable bollocks i think okay that's it thanks for watching bye for now stop stop